So I got a request from one of my viewers to make a login with Discord button, but this time not in PHP, in JavaScript. And the good news is it's honestly even a little bit easier in uh, JavaScript. So what we'll do is we'll get our starter files going. And what I have is an index page that will link to Discord. And this is an old link, so we will replace this with the link that we'll use. Then I have a dashboard page, which is going to be our kind of like login protected page, right? We have an index that will be our server, and we just have a style sheet here in output.css. And all these files and the completed project will be in GitHub. So the first thing we'll do is we'll open up a terminal, and we'll get our server started up. So we'll do npm install express, and let that boot up. And express will handle our routing to Discord, our routing back, um, and it's going to make our life easier. And then eventually you can build upon it in your project. So we'll initialize our express uh, by requiring these modules and getting our app started in our index.js folder here. Then we will use a public directory. And this is a uh, directory that will specify as, hey, this is where we're going to serve our static content. So in our public directory, we have output. And that means that we can reference just everything that's in this public directory as output.css. So that's our uh, line there. And then we will accept incoming requests from Discord um, by or, or from any user, right? Um, by having this slash here. If they just go to our local host slash, they will be taken to index.html. And if they go to auth Discord, they'll be taken to dashboard.html. And we'll handle what actually happens with all the data that we get from uh, Discord or from the user here. So the last thing we have to do is specify which port we're going to run on. And it's port 53134, just some random ports so we know don't have any conflict. And we'll do node index.index.js to start up our server. So hopefully now our server will actually um, have content routing to it. And we do have it, right? So we're on this slash URL and we're here. And if I went to slash auth slash discord, we would go to um, the dashboard page. So let's try that slash auth slash discord. Okay, so we're going to our dashboard page and obviously we don't have any images and things like that because um, we don't have that data yet from Discord. And so let's do that. We have to now go to the Discord developer portal, which I have linked in the Cinder guide. You go in here, you log in, you go to applications, create a new application, put in a name. So login with Discord YT, create. Uh, we can change the image, description, all of that. But really what we want to do is go to our uh, general OAuth and add a redirect. And our redirect is going to be our local host link, okay, slash discord, or sorry, slash auth slash discord, right? Because that's what, when, when discord successfully authenticates somebody, then that's where it'll take them and we will process from there. Then we'll generate a quick URL and discord makes this really easy by selecting the URL generator identity selecting a URL here that we already specified and copying this guy into our index into this href here. So I paste that in there. And one thing you'll notice is it'll say, hey, response type is equal to code. Well, we're going to actually change this to token. If you wanted to cache your results and get the code and do the auth bearer thing, you can. With that said, if you do token, it's going to give you all that data in one step. Again, it's the difference between caching and expiring tokens and just getting all of it in one step depending on what your application needs, that's what you need to do. Okay, so we did all these things and we set this up, we got our URL, and now we're gonna handle what's actually gonna happen. So what's gonna happen is when I go to index, I hit login with Discord, I hit authorize, it takes us to the dashboard and gives us this token. So we're gonna take this token and say, hey Discord, you say that we can do whatever we want with this data within reason, right? And so now we're gonna take that get parameter and in a script tag, this is the dashboard screen in a script tag here. We're going to do on load, get the um, get requests here, get these parameters. And then um, if we don't have an access token, so if they just go here without the access token, let's redirect them back to uh, login here like that. And this line is actually kind of useless. All right. From there, all we have to do is fetch from the Discord API the relevant data about the user. So uh, how do we fetch that? Well, we're going to pass an authorization header, right? Uh, token type is bearer with that access token that we get from where? That URL that they gave to us. And then uh, we're going to get a response. We're going to handle that response, right? So handle the response. 
by getting data from that response object and going like this. So we'll go like that. And just to show you what the response of console log response is, I will show you that here. So if we now refresh, we have our exit, our name, our avatar, and I'll show you really quickly. What does it show you? An object. We can access all of this data from Discord. All right. It was that easy. If we log out, we can redirect them back, and now they don't have the token. So let me know if you have any questions, any suggestions for any future tutorials. I hope you get some benefit from this.